It starts with a period of childhood, as experienced by three English boys in the 1940s and the first half of the 1950s. And the central part of this is devoted to the school which the boys went to, with the two home lives flanking this account. The school itself, the preparatory school system, where children are sent away from home at the age of eight to prepare for later boarding through their teens, hence preparatory, is the most unusual feature of English educational practice. But it's existed for many centuries in England. But only in England, really. Nowhere else in the world do we find anything simpler, similar, except by imitation. Preparatory schools have had an enormous influence on British culture, society, economy, polity and national character over a period of 500 years, but they're very difficult to understand. Clearly, understanding them can only be done retrospectively. You can't undertake deep field work within such a community as an adult. Yet almost all attempts to reconstruct early childhood are based purely on fragmentary memories. The current work, on the other hand, is based on hundreds of letters of three boys from two different families, as well as a set of letters from one mother to her husband and son. This helps to give a multi-dimensional picture, largely written from the viewpoint of the child himself. Many accounts of school life also tend to omit a parallel consideration of life at home. The dragon triptych takes both sides of life equally seriously and stresses the interconnections while preserving the separate experience of the two authors. It's also very easy, tempting, to omit the apparently prosaic and obvious, it's just too humdrum to be mentioned in a book, or to be baffled by things which seem so strange and exotic that we can't really understand them now. Alan McFarlane's experience as a social anthropologist makes him familiar with the practice of distancing the over-familiar and also comprehending the over-strange. He has applied his experience of studying in Nepal, Japan and China to the problem of entering the foreign country, the past is a foreign country, of the semi-closed and secretive world of a boarding school. The Dragon School in North Oxford is known to be not only academically one of the best preparatory schools in the world, but also a bit idiosyncratic and special in its educational philosophy. At the turn of the 1950s, Edwardian educational ideals from an earlier period were being reshaped into a post-war philosophy which would then rapidly evolve in the 1960s. The Dragon anticipated many of the later developments. The first half of the 1950s is also very interesting because it's a watershed between post-war austerity and the new affluence of later decades. This period, with its very different material, medical, social and ideological features, is half familiar, but also very distant. It was a period when the British Empire was partly dismantled after Indian independence in 1947, 
Yet the last scene with African independence and the Suez debacle was still to come. The authors were caught up in this, coming from families with a long colonial heritage. Alan McFarlane has also written widely on English identity and social structure, and this gives a particular flavour to the book, since it is one part of a wider attempt to understand the British, and specifically the English. Jamie Bruce Lockhart's background in a well-known schoolmastering family and his familiarity with conditions in many different countries adds further special insights. But both Alan and Jamie shared the same preparatory and then the same public school and then went on to Oxford and Cambridge over a long period of 13 years give some cohesion to the project.